Hello again, everybody. Les East with Brian Alley Walsh, NewOrleans.com. It's Wednesday, approximately, oh, maybe, what, 30 hours before the preseason opener against the New England Patriots at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. And Les, we're out here by our lonesomes, uh, out here at Saints Camp in the media room, and I thought we'd just take a, a brief opportunity to show the fans what this room looks like. And as I said, there's no one out here except us, so just bear with me. This is not uh, rocket science, but I'm going to try and give you just a little panning of the room as we go around here now. Uh, at the end here, at the very last cubicle, we have WWL Radio. That's where uh, Deke Bellavie and Bobby Hebert and, and uh, Steve Geller and Christian Garrick all sit. And then next to them, Brett Martell of the Associated Press. And then closer down is... is uh, uh, Les, Les East uh, also sits in one of these cubicles. Jim Mashick right here next to me. And then I'm going to pan across the room. And at that is Larry Holder. Uh, and then Sheldon Nichols of the, board, uh, the Mat Baton Rouge Advocate. And then uh, the TP occupies the last three cubicles right here. And WWL TV. Anyway, Jim Henderson. They're all out here. Uh, it's quiet right now, which is kind of unusual because uh, they're normally, if the team was back, there would be a lot of bum, uh, hubbub and buzz and everything else, but it's just us now, Les. So, <clears throat> all right, we'll, let's we'll see how much hubbub and buzz we can create on our own. Here. I think we can come on in, W. Okay. All right, so uh, Les, the news out of Foxborough mm -hmm. is that Lionel Hamilton has possibly torn his ACL in a freak non-contact drill, and uh, this is exactly what the Saints are trying to stay away from, not only in practice but in the preseason games and. And uh, we're going to, to wait to see what the prognosis is and exactly the extent of that injury. But right now, it doesn't look good. What does that mean as we go forward? What does it mean to the roster and that position specifically? Yeah, I, I don't know that it necessarily opens up a spot for somebody on the bubble, although it could help somebody on the current roster make the team. I think it probably, if it is long term, uh, creates an opening for them to bring in a veteran running back. They worked out a couple of guys last week, Liddell Betts and Justin Fargus. Uh, did not sign either one at the time, but they're, they're w very familiar with those two guys. I don't know which one impressed them more in the workout, but I think uh, Liddell Betts probably fits what they're looking for a little bit better in that he's more of a power back. I think they're looking for somebody who can come in in the second half, run with authority like Mike Bell did against Buffalo and some other teams last year against a worn down defense. I think Betts would fit that mold. Uh, but they also need to upgrade special teams where Lionel Hamilton was very um, effective. That can maybe give a better opportunity to somebody like Chris Ivory, who's uh, mm -hmm. gotten a lot of attention in this camp, uh, seems to be a young player with some potential. So his chances may have improved, but I don't see him being the third halfback. I think if Lionel Hamilton is gone for uh, long term, I think that third halfback is somebody who's going to be signed and maybe could be on the practice field by Saturday when they get back to New Orleans. Yeah, I don't see that uh, that player, if there is a, an incoming player, affecting tomorrow night's game. But, you know, when you look at their roster, they have now, healthy-wise, they have th uh, four running backs counting uh, P.J. Hill as the fourth, that being Reggie Bush, Pierre Thomas, Chris Ivory, uh, P.J. Hill, and then two fullbacks. Heath Evans, who's still, you know, taking a day off here and there to... to to, uh, uh, to uh, as a precautionary measure, coming back from from his ACL surgery, and then uh, Marcus Malaya back up fullback. So you know, I think just from an efficient standpoint, and I know Sean likes to run an efficient camp here and get guys their snaps and everything like that. They may have to bring in just another back if indeed it's not Justin Fargus or uh, Liddell Betts, but uh, certainly another back here to finish camp out. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Tomorrow night, obviously, there's some positions that, that uh, we are going to be looking at and that we want to try and uh, talk to the fans about. Uh, the linebacker spot, Scott Fajita's old spot. Mm -hmm. How does that shape up, and who are we looking at tomorrow night? Well, there are a lot of people in the mix there. Uh, first off, uh, Clint Ingram has not practiced because he's coming back from knee surgery. He won't play tomorrow night, I don't think. So uh, he's out of the equation for the time being. Troy Evans, I think they know what he can do at linebacker. He's a special teams captain, or at least was last year. So 
I think his fate rides with how valuable he is on special teams. So as far as strong side linebacker, the two guys you need to look at first and foremost, I think, are Jolon Dunbar, who's kind of being given the first real crack at replacing Scott Vegeta, at least on first down. And then Stanley Arnu, um, the second-year player from Wake Forest who missed all of last year. He tore his Achilles on the first day of rookie minicamp. In fact, it was interesting. I talked to him at the beginning of camp. The first day of practice here was the first time he had worn pads since the 2008 Eagle wow. Bank Bowl game when he was with Wake Forest yeah. because he got hurt on the first day of rookie minicamp. So he has a lot uh, of catching up to do, but they like him. So those are the two guys to watch at strong side linebacker. First and foremost, Dunbar and Vaughn, and also keep an eye on them on special teams. And there's a guy, and Jonathan Casillas is another young mm -hmm. player that I know that they want to want to take a good long look at this preseason. Anthony Waters is a veteran guy that's got some experience. Uh, he's kind of been flying under the radar, and uh, probably I, you know, I have him on my bubble. Uh, uh, he's a guy that you know that certainly can lend his experience to that position. I just think that there's so many young guns, if you will ahead of him that he's going to have to really stand out there. Then the next position uh, certainly of interest is, and maybe is 1A, 1B, but the free safety position mm -hmm. where Malcolm Jenkins and Osama Young are currently holding down the spot in the absence of Darren Sharper. Yeah, that's going to be important because Darren's not playing, and so those guys are going to get extra reps. I think in Malcolm's case, uh, it, it's going to be mental as much as anything. He, he just switched to this position during the offseason, and they want to see if he understands the defense Defense. You know, I talked to Malcolm earlier in camp, and somebody asked him, um, you know, is it a lot more involved as far as making calls in the secondary? And he kind of laughed. He says, basically, in our defense, our safeties tell the corners what to do. So he's taking on a lot mentally for a second-year player. He's a very smart guy. So he has to prove he's handled the mental aspects of it. And uh, Usama, I think, has to prove he can make plays. They know he's a good special teams player. Um, you know, everybody remembers him getting beat for a touchdown in the Super Bowl, but he got pressed into duty at cornerback. And that actually probably helps him a little bit, the fact that he can play cornerback, mm -hmm. hopefully better than he looked and on And both of them, for that matter. Even yeah, if Darren Malcolm, comes back, sure. Malcolm Jenkins, too. Right. And, and that's the key word on this defense is versatility across the board. So the safeties have to be able to show that they're versatile. Uh, another guy to look for is Chip Vaughn. Very similar to Stanley Arnu, both played at Wake Forest, both got drafted in the fourth round last year, both got hurt, missed the whole season. Dennis Allen, the secondary coach, said he's a free safety who has to be able to play strong. So for those three guys, the ability to stay away from mental mistakes, to show they can play more than one position, and to show that they can play special teams will be really important. And then, of course, there's the, all the rookies that we're interested in seeing in their first uh, NFL action, so to speak. Uh, you know, Patrick Robinson, the cornerback, is back on the field. Uh, his hammy, I think, is better. Uh, he should see some time tomorrow. Uh, uh, Charlie Brown, the left tackle, certainly will see some time. Uh, and then Jimmy Graham, the tight end, and Al Woods. I think these are two very, very interesting prospects. And I think Al Woods, of all the four I mentioned just there, I think Al Woods has more to prove than any of those previous guys. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I, I don't think Al has really distinguished himself in camp thus far. Uh, not that he's necessarily um, proven he can't play the position. I just don't think he's jumped out and shown the coaches that he's ready to be an impact player. So I think you know, maybe he's a guy who, when the lights go on, shows you a lot more in the game. But right now, you know, I, I think he's just kind of plodding along, not really uh, impressing anybody in a positive way. And uh, an interesting guy to keep an eye on is Remy Adell, who, you know, was a starter last year, probably the most anonymous starter on this team. Al Woods was brought in to push him at the tackle position. And Anthony Hargrove, even though he doesn't really play the same tackle positions, getting a lot of reps with the first team. But Remy Adell is quietly having a pretty good camp, and I know a lot of people are quick to write him off as a starter or even on the roster, and I think that's premature. I think he's a guy who's hanging on to his spot so far. Yeah, uh, I know that he's he's come into camp uh, in, with a good mindset. His weight is down, which is important for him uh, to get as many snaps and, and as productive as he can and as efficient as he can in camp. I agree with you totally. I think Remy's one of these guys of all the starters, you know, this guy was a starter last year. People forget that. And uh, he's just quietly uh, kind of been pushed to the side with Al Wood's arrival and 
And in Greg Williams' defense, it's the more you can do, the, be the more often you're going to get on the field. And they got a lot of guys that play inside. I know Bobby McCray doesn't like it, but you know he's being asked to play inside a lot of times. And and uh, so Al Woods is is I think has got to step step to the front and and kind of uh, step from the trees, if you will, and and show that he's he's going to be okay in this in this defense. So big big time for him. Uh, let's look at the quarterback position. Obviously, all three of them. Drew's coming off a very unlike Drew. Drew unlike uh, performance uh, in the black and gold game or scrimmage. But we know what he can do and what he's going to do tomorrow night. I'm sure he's going to take the number ones and show what what they're all about. But Patrick Ramsey and Chase Daniel. There's a, there's a good battle going on there for two. Yeah, there is. And Chase made some plays in practice le toward the end of last week. Had an 80-yard scramble, right. which you don't see very often from a quarterback, at least outside of the Big 12 you don't. But uh, So he's shown an ability to make plays. But I think they want Pat Ramsey to be the number two quarterback because of his experience, because of his size. And I think he's an interesting guy to keep an eye on during training camp because he has a long way to go. He, he just showed up at the beginning of training camp. He's still learning the offense. And uh, he has hasn't played a lot the last two or three years. He has a lot of rust he has to shake off. And so he hadn't had a great camp so far, but I think those are two major factors. I think he has the ability to be a better backup than Jamie Martin was previously, perhaps even better than Mark Brunel was the last couple of years. But he doesn't look that way right now. And I think he needs a lot of work in practice, a lot of work in the preseason games to accelerate his grasp of the offense, to shake that rust off. So watch him tomorrow night. If he doesn't look very good, don't write him off. Watch him over the course of the four games and see how much better he looks at the end because I think he has a, he's going to be given every chance to prove he's the number two guy, and I think he's capable of handling it. Yeah, you know, I liken it almost to that uh, in Pat's previous eight years in the league, he's, he's been driving an 85 Honda, which is not a bad car. Believe me, I've had one before. But uh, now he's been given the keys to a, a, a new Ferrari with this offense, and, and I think he's going to like it. Once he understands how it works and how it operates and what he can do with it, I think he's going to enjoy uh, this offense immensely. Uh, that, that'll be it from Saints camp. Just a couple of reminders here that Les East will be posting a story on the three expatriates that are currently on the Saints roster, David Thomas, Heath Evans, and Randall Gay. And Randall Gay, LSU up the road. And I'll be filing something also today that will run into tomorrow, more like an advance on 10 things that we should be looking for is in tomorrow night's game. And, of course, stay tuned to NewOrleans.com for the remainder of the day for updates on Lionel Hamilton's injury. For Les Seast, I'm Brian Alley Walsh. See you next time.